What's up guys? Today we are headed to Tomahawk MX uh, for a little private lesson action. Gonna bring my buddy Bear with me. Don't mind him. Just uh, chewing his blanket. Not sure actually who I'm working with today. I'm gonna have to look at my schedule, but it's gonna be a two or three hour private lesson. Weather's freezing cold. Me at least. I'm sure some of you guys live in colder areas, but 26 out right now, bummer. So I'm gonna dress as warm as I can and head out there and try to bear the elements for a couple hours. I'm gonna throw a GoPro on my student today, lay on the top of his head and just leave the thing running. So the plan is to probably get some cool footage of the lesson and hopefully you guys can take away a couple tips. And that's the plan. Oh, by the way, guys, subscribe. I think we're at, uh, let me check. Yeah, 9,000 subscribers. I did notice that only 8% of the viewership was from subscribers. So if you guys could just hit that subscribe button and get it to 10K, that'd be awesome. At the 10K mark, we're gonna do a bunch of cool giveaways in my trailer, which is basically my storage unit at the track. I found four gear bags full of jerseys, pants, gloves, helmets. I'm gonna give all of it away. So if you guys can think of a cool, creative way to do that, comment down below, let me know and uh, I'd like to do something cool for you guys. So enjoy and hopefully you guys can take away a couple tips from today's video. All right, so we're out here at Tomahawk MX. Got Bear just roaming. So just waiting on the student, should be here any minute. I'm gonna throw the GoPro on his uh, chin with the Dango mount, I think that's what it's called. And we're just gonna keep the camera rolling, so hopefully we can pull a good bit from it. By the way, shout out FXR for this really warm jacket. If you guys can see, got my hand warmers stuffed in the top part of my gloves. It's a little trick for you. At Denver last year when it snowed, had the hand warmer shoved in there and uh, kept me warm. And one more thing. Don't mind that I look like a rainbow. Alpine Star sent me, sent me some brand new white boots but i'm trying to save them for the season so i'm wearing these pink boots that just absolutely match with nothing so disregard i'm bored so i'm just filming everything got the pretty nissan titan and if you're wondering this is the aj cat and zero edition look at this thing dog hair slobber Holy cow, this is a brand new 2020. No, nope, nobody. Come on, not yet. Position <laughs> which looks pretty good. You're a little closed off. So your knees are a little bit further forward than I would like and your elbows are a little lower. If you could drive your knees back and just open your elbows up so you're here rather than here, that'll just make you stronger on the bike. But you, you start here and then as you get, I'd say to that first sprinkler head, you start to do this. Slowly kind of make your shift to the front of the bike. And that process takes you, man, 75 feet. Like it's a really, really slow shift to the front. So if you had, and in a normal situation when the track roughs up, that last 75 feet is where you're gonna have the biggest braking bumps. So you have to make sure that you're in this position until you're not. Like I'm talking, you're here, 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 and then as soon as your braking's complete, as soon as your downshifting's done, boom, then you can make the jump to the front and then you turn. It should be that quick movement. You're just way too slow with that movement. And then when you get done with it and you sit, then you were getting your downshifts. Your downshift should happen at the very beginning of your braking so that you could utilize uh, your engine brake, right? Because you're coming in in third gear, you're leaving it in third gear while you were braking, so you weren't utilizing all that engine brake, and then you were grabbing uh, second gear right after you'd sit down at that sprinkler head right by the tire, right before the tire. Yeah. So you defeated the purpose of using that one extra downshift um, to get that extra engine brake. Just like if you were to fly down a straightaway in fourth gear and just downshift the bike to first without touching the clutch, you're gonna get crazy engine brake out of it. You can utilize that on the track. If you're downshifting after you sit, like in the apex of the turn, you've defeated the purpose of all that. 
hoop will do is after the step up, turn right, you could go left right around that break in the fence and you can just work all this again. Um, on that bike, I mean, you really, you're probably gonna be third all the way through, all the way through. Only place where you're gonna downshift to second is for this turn, I would imagine. Yeah. And then actually when we do focus on that step up, we're not gonna focus on it yet. To help you make the turn, you could actually practice getting your downshift in the air. Okay. Have you, have you upshift and downshift I've in the air? I've done it like a couple times. Okay. But not a lot. It's safe. Um, it's not gonna do anything crazy to not the like brake pass or anything. I mean, no, I mean it might lower the front end. Like it's not not even a noticeable amount. Okay. You'll be totally fine. Just the big thing is make sure it all the body position all starts in your feet. So my fear is that if you're starting to creep forward like this, it could be caused from your feet just being slid a little too far forward. Just make sure that like this is your foot peg. Your foot is here, right on the balls of your feet. Yeah. As soon as we start to slide this way more towards your arch, everything else is going to follow. Your knees are going to follow, your hips are going to follow, and it's going to drive all that weight forward. So just make sure that those feet stay where they need to, so that your knees stay back, your hips stay back, everything stays here. Okay. I know it seems silly, but when you watch me ride, I'm able to make things look kind of easy because I'm just in that position. And unless something goes horribly wrong, it takes a lot for me to get taken out of it. Yeah. You can seat bounce this tabletop if you want. Just make sure that when you seat bounce, you stay smack dab in the center of the seat. Don't do anything funky. Don't lean yeah, back. Yeah, I've never really learned to seat bounce. Were you standing up when you're hitting it in your warm ups or were yeah. you sitting? I think I was standing up. Oh, you were. Okay. Uh, so, a tip with that if you do seat bounce, stay in the seat all the way, let the jump do the work for you. Okay. The bike will compress, unload, and that will naturally take your butt up off the seat. Um, just make sure you're sitting neutral, pretty much dead center on the seat. Elbows about 90 degrees. A lot of people that common mistake is when they go to seat bounce, they think that they will have to sit on the back of the seat. And what that'll do is that'll compress and yeah. load you into like a front foot. Okay, so right, right here. Yeah, dead center. <laughs> Getting like that sweet spot on the seat. Elbows basically 90 degrees. That's when you know you're in the right spot. Um, and with the seat bounce, if you do want to start practicing, this is the day to do it because of how smooth the takeoff is. Just practice seat bouncing halfway, three quarters. And then as you get confident, go a little bit harder uh, and faster. When you preload a jump or when you seat bounce a jump, your RPMs do need to increase as you go up the takeoff. So it's not like when you soak up or scrub a jump, that's consistent RPM from the get-go and you just maintain. So all the way off. Yeah. When you seat bounce or preload, you're actually and you're increasing RPMs big time as you get in the pocket and go off the takeoff. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not cracking the throttle last second out of nowhere because that's going to throw the bike yeah all sorts of weird ways but you definitely are, inc are increasing the rpms because the goal is to compress the suspension as hard as you can so you get that unloading if you do decide to stand up for this just make sure you stand up before you get to the bottom of the uh the takeoff yeah because a lot of people do that a lot of people just because it's a lot of energy to stand here you'll see guys that'll sit just kind of from laziness and it's easier, they'll sit and then all of a sudden they'll decide to stand right here. Yeah. I, maybe that's even what you were doing. I, I'd have to watch closer. The problem with that is when you stand right here, you still have 10 feet, six feet, or seven feet, whatever that is left of the takeoff. If you stand with that much left to go, it's gonna take the weight off the tires and you're gonna get wheel spin on this last little bit. Especially when you start to get the kicker that form, commonly forms here. And that could be why that kicker forms here, right? Probably from people cracking the throttle at the top and standing up a little bit too early, unweighting the bike and getting that wheel spin, that's why it forms that hole. Gotta keep the weight into the tire. So you either need to stand early so that the bike kind of can be in that sweet spot of the suspension or just stay on the seat the whole way. Okay. No matter what you do, when you're trying to get over this jump, just get a straight run at it. For me, I can comfortably come at it sideways um, but anytime you're a little nervous about whether you don't think you're going to clear a jump or not, just get straight. Because if we're clipping the end of it and we're coming at it in the air a little bit sideways, obviously that's when things yeah. get a little hairy. <laughs>
prices are definitely down. <laughs> and I know that was the one thing that you said you need to work on. Um, have I ever taught you the the grip the trick? The triangle? Yeah. I keep trying to, you know, think about it. And I know it's weird, so see where you're holding right yeah. here? Puts look at look at the natural angle if you hold yeah, here. The elbow. Straight line from your hand to your elbow. His elbow's down, yeah, right? Boom. You just open it up a little bit, create that triangle here. It's kind of like, so take your hand off. People say it's like, I don't know, opening a doorknob, right? The only thing that feels weird about this is it is less kind of surface area of your hand on the throttle, but look at where it puts my elbow. I, in fact, it's really, it's an unnatural it's hard, bend yeah. to keep it down. It's just like how I teach pointing your toes in to drive your knees inward, opening up the palms where you're holding the grip like this instead of this, it's gonna keep those elbows up. Yeah. Good job with your elbows in this turn because the bike was doing its thing under you but keeping those elbows up the mistake was just limited um did you get that upshift that last time it looked like? yeah i think i did it was kind of weird though i got it i was like okay got it you looked a little uncomfortable in the air trying to get it but once you landed it was like ah yeah I was like <laughs> one I less really... thing to worry about your landing did actually look a lot smoother now the key is to be able to get that consistent no matter what happens on the takeoff yeah. Whether you think you're coming up short, long, clearing it perfect. Yeah, I can feel like I need to land on the power a little bit because it kind of... Well, lugged. the time before that, you cased it and you land a little sideways. And being in second gear, it didn't pull you out. I mean, you landed on the gas, which was good, but second gear wasn't really enough. Third gear, like having that taller gear would have pulled you out a lot. Somewhere. Yeah, now I can... uh, Let me do one or two laps. Okay. That's the beauty of this mount. You can just do yeah, one of these. Yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> Just got done. Don't make fun of my beanie. I look like a dork, but at least I was warm. Solid lesson, good moisture overall, and pretty tacky for what it was. So we were able to work just, you know, very, very basic stuff. And I think when you're watching this video, everyone's probably gonna wonder, well, when are you gonna teach them something more advanced? And honestly, the fact of the matter is, whether I'm teaching a, a complete beginner sea rider or a professional rider, we're working on basic stuff. We, we really are, and even at the top pro level, the Supercross guys and the top outdoor guys, they're working all the basic stuff as well. I mean, they're doing figure eights, uh, corner track work, riding without the rear brake, just silly drills like that that you would imagine would be designed for a beginner. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two and can apply it to your riding. I'll have the camera with me next time I go to the Supercross track, so I'll just continue to kind of log my progress and kind of make a little series out of this I guess going into A1 and then I'll have a vlog series throughout Supercross so you guys will kind of be able to follow the journey and see how things go but thanks for watching guys uh, see you next time let's try not hit a deer here <laughs>